one. Welcome to Android App Addicts, episode number 17, the show where we talk about Android apps for Android phones, Android devices, and such. Android devices like the Samsung Galaxy Tab, perhaps, which i this close to buying, unless somebody vehemently tells me why I shouldn't. Anyway, here's, here's what we're okay, going to do. you shouldn't. <laughs> The, what? the Motorola tab is coming out. Oh, it's, it's coming out in six months. Coming. You have to wait. You six have to months. Wait. I thought it was coming out in like. No, you know, no. I'm just. I'm, I'm just doing my typical door. Oh. Sorry. Never buy anything in the present. <laughs> buy it in the future, and then in the future, wait till. till I'm just being a jerk. Anyway, <laughs> this is when in the show what we do basically do is bring Android apps to the table. We talk about them, fight about them. Um, we talk about Android news. And we do all kinds of stuff. This is kind of a record-breaking show today because we have two guests live in studio. Lalo Nunez. What's up, Lalo? That's how you doing? Very good. Steve D'Amico, SMD Computer. What's up, Steve? Hey, howdy. Two live in studio people. Plus, we have three guests on Skype. This is awesome. Door to Door Geek in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. What's up, Door? Happy I took off work today because I got to nap. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Napping is important. <laughs> Jose, in the middle portion of your screen, what's up, Jose, from ComputerDoctor.com? Hi, everybody. And Tim Stern, in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, what's up, Tim? Hello, everybody. Been up all night working on a business server. Ooh. Ooh. Sounds nice. We'll save that for PodNuts Pro, then. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank all you guys for jumping on the call. This is a, It's cool we got it all working. I'm actually happy that, that you are all visible at this point, and we can hear you. So, uh, okay, let's start with the man. Let's start with the man who, um, oh gosh, I just drew a blank. Let's start with the man, the door-to-door -door geek in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. What's up, Door? What do you want to bring to the show today? Um, well, first off, I just wanted to say, uh, last week, right after the show, because I was so jealous of that game pad that was able to go on top of, uh, droid keyboards to play games, Yeah. um, I tried to download and install and configure and run Wiimote con Wiimote con um controller right i couldn't get it working <sighs> gave up william tidwell uh grc um grc gem state, gem computers, state computers he pinged me on twitter and said dude it's the best thing ever i said i, can't, I couldn't get it working quick back and forth I was able to get it working. It was something I was doing wrong. It's very easy to get working, actually. And I only had time to play with it for 20 minutes. Best app ever for people without keyboards and who want to play games. Really? Because you can put the Wiimote controller in your pocket, go someplace, put the device up, and play. It's sweet. So it works good. It worked very good in uh, NES Droid or whatever. I had to do one trick to get it to work, which William guided me on doing correctly. Once I did that, it was like I was playing old school games again. Damn. Kind of jealous. Is he easy to set up? Once you do it correctly, I think the key was I had to truly power off my Wii upstairs. That was the main problem, huh? Once I did that, I went to the controller. It said... Um, press one and two on the game controller when there's no lights on it and it will attempt to do a sync have bluetooth on hit the button boop synced right up went into nes droid picked i want down to be this left to be this right to be this and a to be this b to be this boom worked like a charm wow no li gold. no live demo for the show no because i just reformatted this laptop so it's not right now have the ability to do a uh stream on the screen Hey, door for that function to work. Does your phone have to be rooted? Nope, okay. absolutely not. Cool. And all it really does is it sets up an extra keyboard in your keyboard settings. So when you go to use it, it prompts you, and you have to, and it, it goes to that uh, keyboard screen where it says pick your default input method. You go there, pick the Wiimote controller, and it works good charm. So you can just you don't have to have a Wii. Just you can just go buy a Wiimote and do that, right? Indeed. That's awesome. Now, if you really want to get fancy, there's no reason why you could not have a Wiimote and a nunchuck and program all those buttons because they're just inputs. They're just like keys on keyboards. You know what I mean? And I missed I missed in the very beginning. How does it recognize a signal? It's a uh, Bluetooth? Bluetooth? Yes, Bluetooth. Cool. I yep. did not know that. Very yeah, awesome. 
it's very cool. I'm actually going to play with this week sometime, and I'll actually come back if there's anything I find about it that's a failing or just totally awesome. Yes, we would like to know. I, I will definitely do that. Um, I wanted to really quick mention two new home screen apps since last week was the uh, week of the home screen. Um, the first one is called Windows Phone Android Lite. Uh, this strives to give end users a Windows phone experience on an Android device. I've never used a Windows phone, so I'm guessing this is not really it, but it at least gives you a little bit of a base of, you know, for it. I ran it. I Un didn't like it. Unimpressive? Well, be I, is, it, I, is it, it true to what the Windows phone is like? I doubt it, but it does have big blue silly looking buttons like the Windows phone. <laughs> Do they update? Uh, yes. What they are, the, in the screenshot, they're showing you the default buttons. If you go do a lot of themes, you'll find out the custom apps you download and install, like Wiimote con, um, con a Troller, their icons in that screen will be their true icons. But inline applications that are always in there, like, um, email calendar they'll they'll have special icons for them that make it look like it was built into the system um i never played with but the windows phone i i've seen the, the commercial for it but i don't like the layout of the screen and until i touch one i can't really say for sure it just makes me feel like if i'm in third grade you know <laughs> yes. like do i need gigantic buttons like that I, no I, I you know what i have to say i like the gigantic buttons but it's or I, i'm not i don't like these gigantic buttons i don't mind gigantic buttons as long as they don't look like that. I mean, what's <laughs> what's with the big open black sidebar? Like wasted space. These the screen real estate on these phones is small enough. You can't waste yeah. space like that. What's that all about? Right. Well, it's like a form on a web page. Apparently, uh, they don't know how to do ninety degree angles because that little button in the upper hand right hand corner takes you to all of your applications listings. And it's like the whole side is then preoccupied by that button. Exactly. Exactly. Cause that button's up there. We have to have that big. Thing. That, that's just you know the phone might be great but right off right. the bat there screenshot wise fail well and obviously this is a very early implementation implementation for instance there's no way in the interface to get to the android settings there's no push the menu go to settings you have to actually go through the, the menu list to go to the settings it's okay. very painful so it's very early will probably grow i guess it would get better but I don't think I like Windows Phone just because it's Windows, but you know, um, you know, I was rooting for Windows Phone for a while, but then I then ju seriously, just now, just this moment is the moment I ever realize it's going to fail. Just from looking at a, <laughs> just from looking at a screenshot of an of an Android clone of the operating system, I now decided it's not going to work. Well, I believe it's going to fail anyway, just because no one in their right mind thinks this is going to be cool. <laughs> Right. Well, you, you, you know, it's it's better than the BlackBerry. I mean, the BlackBerry is a scroll, 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 click, scroll, 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 <laughs> click, scroll, 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 click. I mean, people are still doing that. That's kind of sad. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's true. It might be better than the BlackBerry, it, but it's, it's you know, it, I think it's kind of designed for our mom, you know, well, they, or, they don't market it to be cool. That's that's the thing too. That if you watch the commercials, they don't try. They're not trying to be cool. They're trying to be like, this is a phone where you do what you want to do and then put it down and don't get in a car accident. I mean, so they're they are trying a different angle, which I guess is good. But I don't think people are gonna buy buy into that idea. Therefore, right. not buy the phone. Or and I'm not sure if the target audience is the home user. The reason that a lot of people don't use the iPhone or the Android in a corporate environment because you can't lock it down. You know, you can't. Lock it right. down like a Windows the device. So I'm not sure if this phone will allow it to be used in a corporate environment. Uh, I bet they will. I bet they I will. Can, That'll be their saving grace. Yeah, I can tell you it's going to be a lot more corporate friendly than iPhone and Android. But it's hard to be as corporate friendly as uh, uh, BlackBerry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they yeah, that should make a BlackBerry server that all your devices can talk to and get locked down. You can't play games. Can right. go proxy off the internet, so you're you're right, Dor. Yeah, they're gonna have a degree of that. It's just unclear how much. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the Gingerbread Launcher. So if you're not running Gingerbread, you can run a Gingerbread-esque home replacement screen. 
Um, personally, I don't foresee a native Android home replacement screen or home screen ever being my home screen. And if you notice, Steve, there's no screenshots. I know. I just checked. <laughs> yeah, Dude. it is very. What's the point? I know. What's it, the point it, of even creating an app? Epic fail. <laughs> Thank you, because you know and I know it only takes seconds to make a screenshot. Um, it doesn't look like anything fancy, but from what I've seen of the gingerbread launcher, it doesn't look like anything fancy. It's just a little bit more polished, a little bit okay. cleaner looking. All right. Um, I, I just wanted to give that update. Um, okay. Then on to the actual apps. I've went zombie-rific crazy in the last uh, couple weeks, partially because of the TV show The Walking Dead, uh, which brings me to the first app, which is the Walking Dead Survival Test. Um, there is no action, there is no adventure, there is no nothing like that in this application. It's quite simply, you do a questionnaire with multiple choice answers. Based upon your answers, they pick what cast member you are most like. Wow. Uh, that's pretty cool. I guess if you like that show. I literally installed it. Bing, 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 bing. I, I guess I matched up with the main character of the show since he's the main character of the show, and then I uninstalled it. <laughs> you got what you wanted out of the app. You wanted to be yes. a main character, didn't the you? The main character, Dor. If well, he's a cop. He's a good guy. Yeah, but if you if you fail the test, are you do you become a zombie? <laughs> no. Well, it does say the questions are timed. So if you take too long, I do believe you get eaten. Eaten. <laughs> you get e oh, you get eaten. <laughs> you don't yeah. just become the, you, the, sh the member the 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 actor on the show that you most resemble is this guy and this guy with missing a head. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, the next one I wanted to mention, it's actually a very cool GPS app. If you ever have to walk anywhere, roller skate, bike, skateboard, jog, or anything anywhere, and you want to do something extra while you're doing it, it's an application called Z Zombie Run. Um, the best part about this application is zombies have speeds. So if you're walking, you can pick um, the original um, uh, Night of the Living Dead zombies, where they only go, I think it said, 2.3 miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> then you can pick... Um, 20, is 28 Days Later zombies, are they considered zombies? Because they're yes. fast. They're fast mamas. Well, yeah, that was the thing. The second speed, or they were the third speed of oh. zombie. They go okay. like 8 miles an hour. Okay. Um, and it's a very simple G GPS map over face where you see you as a little dot and then you see zombies as zombies when they're green, they don't see you yet. And they're just basically walking in circles. And then when they're red is when they see you and they smell you and they're starting to come after you. So you can have it, you know, walking down the street and you see some zombies coming towards you cross the other side of the street and keep walking because <laughs> they're slow. So you pick the really slow one. This is so dangerous. Oh, I know. And, don't do it if you're driving a car is all <laughs> I gotta say. So God forbid I get hit by a car and the officer goes, What's what happened? I was running away from, from a zombie. <laughs> yes. Virtual zombies. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You could show them your phone as as evidence. Right. <laughs> um and the the la and I gotta say, this app is cool if you just wanna walk around someplace, an excuse for exercise. Yeah. And if anyone has seen me I need a little bit of exercise. <laughs> he um, seen. And the last app I want to talk about, it's uh, called Android Comic Viewer. It's actually called, this is the thing I, don't, I can't stand about the market. In the market, it's called Droid Comic Viewer. When you put it on your phone, it's called ACV for Android Comic Viewer. Uh, I hate that. Me too. I hate that. But I got to say, the reason I'm picking this app is because I downloaded The Walking Dead comic book series which actually started in 2004 and i'm up to like um comic number 29 i believe and it goes up to i think 60s so i'm having a very good time with this application reading the comic here a, a couple pluses i gotta mention about this app how it functions there's a hard rotate lock by default to where if you have it in landscape and you lay down the phone does not automatically pivot to a different angle. It stays with that angle, which I like. Cool. Secondly, if your books are named correctly, each book is a separate file. They end in uh, CBR, I think it is. Yeah, CBR. 
if it, if they're named correctly, The Walking Dead 01, The Walking Dead 02, The Walking Dead 03. When you get to the last page of 01, you hit next, it automatically opens up 02. So it's a very seamless experience while when you're going through a series of comics. Very cool. Don't walk, don't read all the comics and spoil the show for yourself. I already have. Huh. I'm I'm <laughs> already because here's the thing. I hate this is the the biggest failing about that show. Initial season six shows long. The season is now over. The next season does not start till October 2011. Oh, that's super lame. So the show's going to fail and be off the air. Yeah, that's not good. The Sopranos did that. Well, yeah, but that's Sopranos. But they did it for like, they had like a delay for like a couple of years, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I understand, you know, it, it, th- this is being put on by AMC, not by NBC, CBS. So it's not like they got a huge budget. So they can't put a lot of money into something unless they know it's going to be successful. Right. So if it is successful next year, I'm sure it's going to be a lot quicker for episodes. Cool, Dor. Thank you for the uh, apps. No problem. Okay, are we over to Jose now? All right, Jose, what do you got for us today? Oh, Jose, you're on mute. <laughs> he still can't hear you. Jose, I can I see you. Not. Okay. okay, there you go. We hear you now. Wow, I didn't know that. All right. Um, well, hopefully the ones I got today, um, I know I got two of them that might be very useful or somewhat useful, and the third one is mostly just for fun. Okay. Um, the first one, um, I don't know if any of you, um, obviously uh, some of you know that uh, LastPass just bought um, Xbox, right? So um, yes. this one, um, if you already had a membership with them, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of kind of cool and all that, that you already had the either the Xbox or the LastPass. But like Steve said, you can now get a combination membership with both of them for $20 a year. So um, I'm only using the LastPass. I never was a user of Xbox at all. But um, it's kind of cool because if you have all your passwords and everything, you know, for all your websites, your accounts, your bank accounts, your credit card accounts, um, even your credit card numbers and your let's say that you put your account numbers and your your phone numbers that you need to call in case you lose them you know it's kind of good to have that on you all, at all times that way if you lose your wallet as long as you haven't lost your phone you know you instantly have access to to all that information and you can cancel them like immediately instead of having to wait until you locate those numbers and um you know obviously if you listen to uh, steve Gesson on uh, security now you probably heard how secure LastPass is and how good it is considered so yeah. As long as you don't put like your your main password to lo- automatically save it or log in into your LastPass account on your Android phone, then it, it should be totally secure, unless somebody gets a hold of your you know weak password or whatever. So I think it's kind of cool, you know. Like I use it to like basically all my all my uh, websites where I have accounts and everything, which is probably up to like sixty or eighty by now, and obviously I can't remember all of them. So it's kind of cool to carry around all that information. Maybe your kids' um, social security numbers if you need them, you know, when you're out and about. Right. Uh, stuff like that. And it's all secure, encrypted, and carry it around with you. I was using a program called uh, Password Safe. But, you know, I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. If LastPass can do all this, that's when I decided to get the, the $12 a year membership on it. Because instead of having, you know, three or four different programs to do different things, you know, just put it all together in one. Right. So, yeah, and I'll just say the reason that app is fantastic, it's preset to where you can do a download. And even if that service falls off the face of the earth, you will still have all of your passwords. Because they're in the cloud. Well, no, it, it is in the cloud, but you can download an encrypted version of that where your master password on. Un, um, then locks it, and it's in a friendly format that can be imported into other services uh, of all your passwords. I, I don't know any other cloud service that makes it so easy to take your stuff offline. So if LastPass gets blown up or falls into the center of the earth, you can still log into your sites. Sweet. Yep. I'm, I'm, That's. Uh, yeah. I thought that was kind of cool, and I just started using it maybe less than a month ago, and and I just so far I love it because you know I, instead of having to like in those few instances where I do want to check my bank account balance or whatever, you know, instead of having to go to the bank's website and then log in, you know, you just go to the LastPass app and then just click on the, you know, the your bank uh, 
saved account that you have on there and boom, it opens up the browser, logs you in, and you know, it's a couple of seconds. So the LastPass app basically is a, a list of of sites that you, so you have to go to the LastPass app to get into those sites uh, to get the, that to open up your, your account in those sites. You have to go through the yeah. actual app. Okay. If you leave it logged in all the time, I believe even when you go to an, to one of those websites that you have saved in there, it'll automatically fill it in for you. But obviously the point is not to have all your secure websites logged in at all times. <laughs> right. That's know, something, so that is something I would do. Oops. <laughs> I thought about that and I was like, nah, I, I don't <laughs> think I want to you know, keep that information available. If I ever do lose my phone, then it's all out there. Of course, I can right away probably go change my LastPass account or whatever, but who knows that, how long yes, that would see, take. You already thought that through much farther than me. A little well, bit. <laughs> the, yeah, so, and, the, and the big plus is for even like Dolphin oh. browser, you can get a LastPass plugin that connects to that app. So it's even easier. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It integrates really good with a lot of, uh, a lot of services and a lot of things. So, um, okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for that one, unless you guys want to mention something about it. Nope. Oh, what else you got? It's cool. Okay, the second one I have is, uh, and, and this app, I just, actually, I just found it because the other day somebody at work, of course, I'm the, I'm the phone guy, the tech guy over there. You know, everybody comes to me for advice on what computer should I get, what cell phone should I get, and obviously, I always try to guide them away from the iPhone, you know. They're like, should I get an iPhone or should I get this? And I was like, you know what? I'm not the right person to ask that. <laughs> I, Come on, man. Even now, as a tech, you got to be subjective. Like, if, if the iPhone is right for them, unless, mm -hmm. you, unless, you, unless you don't think it's right for anybody, then you should recommend it. I do tell them. I think, you know, I think like, like Leo always says, you know, I think phones are a very personal thing. You know, so what I like might not be for you, but I, told, I tell them, if you don't want to be locked into one carrier, one device, you know, only one thing, and you could only do what Steve says it's okay to do, then do not get an iPhone. If you want more freedom to choose, you know, different colors, sizes, keyboard, no keyboard, whatever, then I would recommend you get an Android and you can go with any carrier you want. Okay. You know, but yeah. But now to the to the point of the matter is, so this guy he had a, a Droid Eris and um, he was running out of room, of, out of memory. He was getting warnings, you know, very low memory, and he had six megabytes left in his internal memory. Wow. And that doesn't help him, you know. What that was he, he doing? In, Downloading movies or something? No, you know what? Well, page? here's here's where my app comes in handy. It's called uh, Disk Usage, and it is very similar to Tree Size and uh, Winderstat on Windows. You remember those? Tree Size, Winderstat. Yeah, is that like a a graphical representation of how much? Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and and what's cool about this? Um, if you bring up the the screenshot there on uh for the app, is it um, what, what's the name of it again? Disk usage. Disk usage. Okay. All one and, uh, word. I'm sorry, Thor? Uh, I just said it is all one word. Aha. Uh -huh. That's key. Oh, really? Yeah, it is. You know, when I looked for it under two different, under one word, it didn't come up. And when I separated it, then I found it. Good one. All right. Yeah, there. but that's what, what Thor says about the market. It's all weird. <laughs> yeah, the market sucks. Yeah. But okay. Well, anyways, the bottom line is you can you can look through either your internal memory or your SD card. And the cool thing about it is that uh, if you see way on the left, that's the root of your card or of your memory. And then as you go in, it tells you like inside there, we got these two folders and inside there we have all these folders. And as you click on them, it's kind of cool the way when you click on, on one of the little um, representations there, but blows it'll it up. open. Yeah. It'll open up and then it zooms in to see what, like if you get to the, the Mac pictures folder, yeah, it does that. And it is awesome because w what I saw on his phone, was that the Facebook app was taking about 48 megabytes of memory for some reason, and, and it was in the data portion of Facebook. So That still shouldn't take up all his RAM. No, I'm, I'm trying to do some research into why it's doing that, because on my Facebook app, it's only taking up, I think, about 3.8 megabytes. Wow. And that's like, wow, he was, he was getting basically robbed of his memory just from the Facebook app, and the rest of it was all his apps and everything. You know, It's a droid era, so it doesn't have a lot of memory. Right. But, um, this reminds me of Spacemonger. That's my personal little favorite. Oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You use Spacemonger. I always use that uh, that other one, a uh, Winderstat. I like Winderstat. Yeah. And what and what I've done too, I've I've hooked up my Droid to my PC, so it mounts as a USB device, and I use Tree Size against the mounted the Droid. So. The, what the app? The app Tree Size? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. You could do it through the computer? Right. Damn. Oh, that's sweet. Well, yeah, that. That's only for the SD card. This app can do internal Oh, I memory. got you. But I got to say, graphically, this isn't the prettiest app. This app is so functional. I love it. Yeah, it's usable. Yeah, I, I liked it too. When I, when I started looking through it, you know, and I started playing around with it, I was like, wow, this is awesome. And I instantly liked it. And I said, I got to keep that one in mind. Cool. That's a good one. Okay. And um, the last one, um, I actually had a couple of fun ones, but knowing that there's, you know, five people here today, plus you and all that, I'm just going to do one more. Um, this one is called Camera Fun Pro. And uh, basically, it's just a little, it's just a little um, like a filters for the, for the camera app. So it lets you take all kinds of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing the wrong one. <laughs> let's do that. I'm talking about one and I put the link for another one. <clears throat> so let's do a fatty booth. I'm sorry. I had another one there. Oh, you can't and, tease uh, us like that. And well, I'm let's just do both of them then. No, what, what is this one? Fatty booth? Fatty booth. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I, I learned about this one was because there was a guy uh, who was asking me, hey, um, there's this guy that has an iPhone and he, he has this, this program on there, oh what they call God. them programs. And he's like, and you know, they could make anybody look fat. And I was like, are you serious? I'm like, what, what is, I wonder which one it is. So I started looking through the market and right away <laughs> I found a couple of them. And um, I, I actually purchased this one and I tried it out and everything. And it's kind of cool because it lets you either take an existing picture and or you could take a, um, a photo with a camera and instantly, you know, blow them up like that. Oh my gosh, man. It, it's just kind of funny. You know, I did myself and my daughter and people have been texting me pictures and saying, Hey, can you make this one look fat and send it back to me? I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to use this on myself. Not, not that my face is thin. I'm going to use this on myself and send it to people that I haven't seen for like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> this you know, is awesome. You know, it's funny. And I see this app and I, I'm actually question if it's an app that will make you look thinner. Yeah. Thin. No. That's what I need, yes. <laughs> That's what I need. Come on, Lord. Come on. Yeah. And, and no, you know what? The funny thing is I there's this guy at work that he um he drinks a lot of monster. I mean that you know the the energy drink? Yeah. And I told I sent him a picture that I already had of him because he sent me he sends me like funny, you know, pictures once in a while. So yeah. I had one in there and I said, oh, I'm gonna try this. So I blew it up and I sent it back and I said, Oh my god, is this what happened to you already for drinking all that monster? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like very funny, dude. <laughs> but it has but electrolytes. It cool. mm -hmm. <laughs> but, it ha but it has electrolytes. Well, that makes it much better. <laughs> That's yeah, what people yeah. want, right? That's what plants crave. That's what, what they say. That stuff. That's a good one, Jose. I like that one, actually. All right. And, uh, well, since I already ruined it and teased you guys, let's do the last one then. Okay. Um, this one, Camera Fun Pro, is just uh, like it lets you use filters to take pictures. Like, you know, if, if you want to use a sepia filter or black and white or um canvas it has like about 14 or 15 filters and uh, one of them is like neon and i can't remember all of them i think it has them right there pinch watercolor you know and it's kind of fun i took a couple of pictures at work the other day and and uh, just of the locomotives you know the trains and everything it made them look pretty interesting i like the sketch one in the screenshot of that girl it looks yeah. really good that's exactly the one i, I wish i had it uh, up on uh on some other site right now, but I, I have one of lo the locomotives that I took with that sketch. Oh, that would be it, awesome. It looks awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, for those of you who don't know, Jose gets to drive locomotives around. That's a cool job. That is cool. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely. Hey. I want to drive yeah. one. Do you, you get to blow the horn whenever you want? <laughs> well, you know what? Technically, we do. I mean, they don't tell us we can't do it at night, you know, because I work midnight, so... <laughs> Um, and then there's a couple of times when people have to blow them anyways, because they, when the, the locomotives come in for service, they have to test the bell, the horn and everything. Damn. Steve's the uh, guy, Steve, are you the guy on the side of the road that when a train goes by, you go like do one of these, like for the truckers? Absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That's for the they trucks. Yeah. For the truckers. They, they like that when you do that too. Do they? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's confirmed. Yeah. That's confirmed. M well, it seems like <laughs> most of them like that. Yeah. I would like, I it. would like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll do it. I used to, I mean, no, I used it's to all drive them, trucks. Uh, <laughs> Give them that sign, they'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I used to drive trucks before, and there was a couple of kids that, you know, when they passed by or something, they would do the blow the horn. Did you like that when they did that? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cool because it made them all smile and everything, you know? Yeah. Gave them a little thrill. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Good apps, well, Jose. That's all I got, good. guys. You, you know, I didn't know we were going to have everybody on the show, but I'm, I'm not bringing any apps, so that's cool. It, you didn't take too long. It was, it was totally fine. But the question is, did you have apps, Steve? 
Yeah, that Let's is. Let's move on to Tim Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Tim. Yeah, first, you... I'd like to say you guys are killing me over there in the pod that's pad, man. Yeah. You're killing hey. me over there. So uh, we're having a good time. It's going to be. It's not, let's just say nuts at night post show is going to be crazy. Yeah. Oh wow. We're getting like the live strippers over and every. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, they're, they're waiting. Uh, the room. <laughs> just kidding. Would never do that. No, yeah. never. That would be too much fun. <laughs> yeah. Anyone's invited, Timster. Come down anytime. Hey, you hear that invite? An invite. Yeah. Oh. Four hours away. It's not too long. Hey, Four I did hours it. away. Strippers. Hey. You know what? We'll meet in the middle somewhere, Timster. One of these times, I'll drive two hours. You can just bring the studio. Yeah, we do port. We'll go portable. I want- I've been wanting to do that for a while now. Oh yeah, that's good. Dude. On his Android, he has the, uh, oh man. You know, we, we go to Timster, oh, right? All show, he's fine. Oh. I'm gonna blame him on this one. <laughs> okay, look. Help Timster get a new freaking router foundation. We're all gonna chip in. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 is that the name of the foundation? Help <laughs> Timster get a new router foundation. We got to find out what that abbreviates to. All right, Steve D. I guess we're over to you till, till we get Timster back. You ready? Yes. Okay, Steve D. Let her rip. Well, I'm gonna bring back a uh, a goodie that I've been loving and been using and uh, cherishing. It's called a <laughs> it's called Cur- Gmail Label caressing. Notifier. Um, what there's is some it? there's some extra features that I noticed. Uh, I don't know if they're newer or uh, they're, they're new to me. That's what I know, do know. And uh, with Gmail Lib. To start from the beginning, Gmail load up, um, Gmail label notifier. What that does is it gives you um, the ability to make a label in Gmail, set a filter so that messages become labeled when they come in, and and then this this application on your phone will allow it allow you to be notified when that when something triggers that label. And it's really, really nice, especially if you're if you want to be alerted for certain things, certain activities, like maybe something sold on eBay or somebody sends you a message through your website to repair a computer. And uh, one of my favorite new features, new to me features, is the ability to make uh, iconed widgets, um, just basically icons of your uh, very popular labels that you like so much. Um, here's a here's a kind of a, a, a small. I don't know if this comes out on the. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah, there we go. Oh, neat. Uh, it's a little we went fuzzy. dark. We went dark. We get the idea though. It's so you, it takes you right to your label bin, I guess you call it, or yes. la- la- list of. All right, that's sweet. And it just just shows you it open basically what it does. The icon opens you up to Gmail, just like like just like the Gmail application, but only f- shows you uh, emails that apply to that label. Ooh, that, that's pretty cool. Do you use it? Do you use that app? Yeah, I've been like I've been really using it a lot now that I've been on vacation. Playing around more with my phone now that I'm not not busy doing repair jobs. <laughs> do you have a label for Podnuts? Yes, I do actually. Okay. And uh, I have a I have a label for a bunch of different things, but I didn't have I didn't set the notifier for a lot of things because I've been lazy. It's okay. And distracted. But anyway, <laughs> so um, the other app. Well, I just like that app so much, and that's a cool new feature for me. Um, the other app, which I think is uh, very Podnuts related, is Android IRC. Okay. It's my favorite one, and there's a reason. There is a lot of IRC clients on um, uh, on uh, in the Android market, and uh, this one I think was Pay. I'm not sure, and um, it's uh, it's my favorite one. Um, it's really very much like a few other ones, but there's one little kind of hidden feature that you wouldn't notice unless you've played with a lot of the other ones, and that is that it'll alert you with a notification if you um, if you somebody writes your name in the chat. Which is really nice. So what you could do basically with this is you can um, go to an IRC chat room, be in that chat room, stick your phone in your pocket, and if somebody says "Hey" to you and, and uses your name that you're signed in with, it will beep and let you know that somebody's actually looking for you. And then you could, if you're around, you can actually pop in and see what they're saying. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. That's that's one feature that I found on that. I, I didn't find on a lot of the other apps. So that's why I like this one. And I've been using it for a while, and I've always liked it. I did switch to a couple others. And just this one feature really makes me want to stick with just this particular app. Um, and it's a really nice. Android IRC. That's the name of it. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. And um, oh, last week I was talking about um, uh, a Picasa tool that I, I was recommended to me, but I didn't, get enough chance, I didn't get a chance to really play with it. 
Um, I don't like the app. Uh, somebody recommended it, and they thought it was really nice. Uh, I tried it. I was playing with it this uh, while I was on vacation. I don't like the app. Um, it doesn't seem very intuitive. It's got a lot of features. They don't seem to all work for me. Um, what's the one of the one of the functions for a Picasso tool that I added was to have the ability to upload your pictures to Picasso. It was pretty nice. It's not easy. What is easy is uh, an app I've recommended a few times, and it's and it's called Gallery. I mentioned it a few times. Yeah, you like that one. Yeah, it one two a couple of the different features. You know, Gallery in the uh, you can download. It's free. Um, shows your pictures really nice, uh, so you can really lay them out. It also allows you to see your Picasso web albums. It just synchronizes them automatically. And then um, with your camera app, uh, your pictures, you can, um, but my favorite part is that you there's a little share option where you can multi-select pictures that you've taken minutes ago even and upload them to either Dropbox or to Picasso and to a Picasso, uh, in any, any specific Picasso a web album that you might have and uh so you could be on vacation and then right then there after you take all your pictures boom upload them directly to your picasso account it's pretty sweet well i mean i think the sweetest thing about it because my gallery i can upload pictures to dropbox but i can't do bulk i mean um yeah, like batch um mm -hmm. uploads you can do that on yours right yes i can yeah that's that's a really cool feature i don't i can't tell you how many times i just like oh this sucks i gotta keep uploading 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 and you can batch upload um with this gallery app too as well so that's it's just if you type in gallery, you'll see it in the app market. It is free, and it it looks like a, like a picture. It's kind of like a like it looks like a sunset, and uh, that's it's I highly recommend that. Just called everybody. plain old gallery, right? Yeah, it's a really easy one to uh, yeah to play. And it's with. like a gold gold looking square. Yeah, gallery three D. Mm, I'm pretty sure that's not it. Okay, okay, it might be because it is kind of. I mean, I'm in that brain. I pick gallery. It's yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Yes, okay. Gallery 3D. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think it's just called Gallery on. I know it's just called Gallery on my phone, and I think it's just called Gallery in the. Uh, yeah, the but that's the app versus market name uh, clues that we keep going through. Right. Oh, uh, okay. I love so, that. Yeah, that's. What I I think everybody should get the Gallery app. It's it's my favorite part is that it might have some features other apps have, but it just does them so simple. It's just so simple to use that it really it really makes like getting in and out of your phone and, and doing what you got to do very, you know, very quick and to the point. Cool. Good stuff, Steve. Thanks. Is that it? Yes. All right, over to Timster. <laughs> All right, Tim, you are back with us, thank God. Yes, we're going to try this again. Let's do it. Uh, Steve D., I know you're visiting Florida. Have yes. you had a chance to visit Busch Gardens? No. The reason why I'm asking is because you're a roller coaster lover, correct? Yes, I am. Nobody would okay. go with me. Well, he never asked you know, me, by the way. He never even mentioned I it. asked you before I came. What did I say? Oh, no. You said See, I didn't maybe. Mean to start that. <laughs> I did not mean to start that. Because <laughs> uh, I, I know Steve D, and yeah. we've talked briefly about roller coasters. I'm a roller coaster fanatic also. But yeah, you know I was when hoping you come that down? you would have gone to Busch Gardens because there's this roller coaster there called the Montu. I, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> but it is seriously, and I've been to quite a few theme parks myself. It is one fun roller It is the funnest roller coaster I've ever been on. It's called the Montu. It's in Bush Gardens, Florida. And it is great. But this app that I found, I, I thought maybe, you know, we could give it a shot. It's called G Force. Okay. And that it basically gives you a uh, real live uh, um, uh, report of the G's that you're pulling on. Uh, on wherever you're at with your phone. Um, so uh, first I would like to want to know if if Steve D would ever use it, but then I would also recommend that he bring it on. If the he does case. use it, there there's no recording, there's no uh, logging uh, in this application. So you have to physically sit there and look at your phone while you're on the roller coaster, <laughs> 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 and then you can see what G's you're pulling and. But that kind of sucks because I would be afraid to lose my phone during the oh, no, right me too. because you're, you're going on, like this. You. So you're trying to see your phone. This, well, this app <laughs> is would be awesome if it had logging. So you know what I decided to try. I, I said, you know what, I sit sat in my computer chair and I says, oh, let's see how many G's I can pull if I start spinning, <laughs> spinning in my computer chair. <laughs> 
So I spotted, spotted my computer chair, and actually I pulled uh, three Gs in my computer chair. So at least I can sit there and you know kind of watch it. But it, it don't, you know, this app would be great, but it it just lacks the logging feature. I mean, I don't understand why I c- c- couldn't incorporate that. But um, so if you are like a roller coaster, I wouldn't recommend it. Well, I can tell you this. Here's a little disclaimer. Um, until he, they put the uh, logging in there, I would not use it on roller coasters that way because on a lot of roller coasters and a lot of the parks, if they catch you, with, they're going to think you're filming the ride that right. you're taking. Uh-huh. And they, there's like very strict rules against that. If you they catch you holding your phone out, they're going to think you're taking a, like a movie of your ride. And they will beat you. They will throw you out. I mean, literally. Like, uh, they will, they will unlatch your seatbelt while the ride's in motion. <laughs> oh, wow. No, what, what I, Dude. and try explaining to them that, no, no, I swear, I was just checking the G-forces of your roller coaster. You yeah. think they're going to believe uh, that? Tim, sir, what's the name of it? I, because uh, I, I can't find it in App. There's two in App Brain, GeForce and GeForce, uh, or GeForce okay. Meter and Max Speed. Did you get it from App Brain or the Android Market? I got it from App Brain, and it's called G Dash Force. Uh huh. The punctuation is ah, oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. There we and, go. Cool. And, and just a really quick note: the uh, the um, Star Trek Tricorder app does have a built-in GeForce reader, but also again doesn't log. I'm right. trying to get a picture of you, Dor, but you're obviously preoccupied. <laughs> Just a little. Is that a Castlevania? Yes, it yes. is. Yes. And that controller um, is sweet. The Wii, you're using the Wii for that? Yeah. All right. Timster. Hey, guys, this one right here, Um, it seems like it's uh, kind of similar to what Timster is saying, but this one does appear to have logging. That really? That travel meter, Max. Oh, do tell. Ah. Yeah. I'm looking at it right now, and it shows. it tells you that it shows your... Wait a minute. How many G's as ha- as uh, what is it? As well as your highest ever. But... Gravometer. Okay. Yeah. The highest ever. Well, that's better than nothing. Mm-hmm. He's talking about Gravometer. It's free app. Okay. There you go. Cool. Gravometer. Thank you, Jose. Cool. No problem. All right, Tim. What else you got? Okay. Uh, rate calculator. Straight up for your I- your you IT guys. Uh, you can basically, um, it will give you, uh, it, l- it lets you input the number of drives, what size and what rate level to easily see That is cool. Uh, how much, how much, uh, space you will acquire by either using a RAID zero, RAID one, RAID five, RAID six, or RAID 10. That is very cool. No so, shot. you know, it's just a quick reference thing and yeah. it works really well. Cool. Really mm-hmm. quick. Yep. And real quick on news, guess what? Toshiba is getting into the Android phone market. Really? Yeah. yeah. And this is from, um, let's see, this is from, uh, what is it? Droidgamers.com. And basically, it is a waterproof Android phone. It's only available in Japan. And it is the only other phone that boasts. Um, uh, waterproof would be the the Defy on T-Mobile. Both of them boast waterproof devices. The so, def- oh, the Defy is actually waterproof. I thought it was just water resistant. Yep. No, nope. waterproof. Uh huh. It is only two phones, and one of them is only available in Japan, which is the the one by Toshiba. And the name of that would be um, actually I don't know. I think it says Regza. The Toshiba Regza in Japan only. Regza, stupid. So yeah. No. So, so have you guys heard now... real quick? I just want to run out real quick. Have you guys heard that? Come on, it's a national story. The Droid Two that exploded in the guy's ear. Yeah. No. This always a story. One that, of these stories that was a um, Droid X. But did you see the video? Did you see the story? I mean, I know it seems fake to me. Yeah. You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, How can Dor even concentrate? <laughs> I know. I'm trying to show Dor's face. You can't because the camera's looking at the uh, game. You think? <laughs> well, I'm. I know. I'm glad, Timster. I have a Droid too. I feel. I feel horrible and afraid, and I'm fearful for the life of anybody who does have a Droid too. Hey, that's me. Oh, Oops. that's exactly that. right. Can Steve get, you know if get, I get a bit farther away from me? <laughs> 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 Boom. <laughs> I'll let everybody. I'll let anybody know that my droid explodes and kills me. Right? I'll let everybody know. Yes, let us know. Yeah, like Text this. Us. This. Yeah, this guy's <laughs> ear was like bleeding 
profusely. You know, I, I wonder what circumstances that was under. I mean, the thing might have well, probably dropped it ten times. I mean, or right. you, even if it's, I mean, if it's even if it's true, I mean, it's probably fake. But well, still. the funniest thing is that there was no prerequisite. There was never any discussion about what happened before that fact. It just all of a sudden, bam! He heard a he heard a a click Pop. or something, and bam! And Blew up. Maybe it was a practical joke from one of his buddies. They put like an M80 in the thing. An M80. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna say if you look at the phone, head. yeah, real good friends. You know, if you take a look at the phone, it looks more like an implode than an explode. And I'll say, here's the part that I think is extremely fishy. He said he heard a loud pop. Then he finished the call. <laughs> Then he uh, went in the house and he looked in the mirror at his ear and he saw it was bleeding. He finished the call. Let me tell you something. I hear a pop right in my ear. I'm freaking out. Plus the, phone would, not, the phone would stop working. It, well, I, that's why I think he's full of poop. Yeah, I think so too. Well, I he, hope they revoke that app from the market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not a good app. I don't want that one. And by the way, I was, I was joking about the Droid 2 thing. I, I'm, I don't feel bad for people who have it. I, I, there was of just, course I was you just, don't. I was just press, trying to press Steve D's button. Physical keyboard for the win. <laughs> I hey, can did put you hear it. about the ad, the couple that sued Google because of the Google Maps and because they took a picture of yeah. their house and all that? Did you? Yeah. And they awarded them $1 for trespassing? Yep. $1, really? Yep, yeah. that's what the judge that's, said, $1. That's so that, awesome that Google only has to pay them $1. I know, because, I mean, you just, like, anybody just tries to see an opportunity, like, oh, this company has a lot of money. Let's right. see what we can get them right. for. So that's that's good. That's great. That's good news. Pay them in manure. <laughs> yeah. wow. Any other um, Android news? I have a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, today, I think it was just tweeted by uh, Eric or whatever his name is from Google, that as of now, they're shipping 300,000 Android devices per day or activating. So... Apple's, uh, oh, well, Android has 200,000. We got 230,000 a day. I think that didn't last very long because now apparently we're way over that number again. Got yeah. it. So that's good. And then another Any one, other uh, anti-Apple news yet? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> no. Actually, that was the only one right now. <laughs> okay. The only, the only other little comment I wanted to make is it's kind of ridiculous how, you know how right now everybody's uh, that 4G and 4G, and no, that's not 4G yeah. because the International Communications Union they said that 4G has to be 100 megabits if you're mobile and a yeah. gigabit if you're stationary. Just, and I'm yeah. thinking, how ridiculous is that when we can't even get those speeds with fiber yet? <laughs> where, where do they think we're going to get 100 megabits or one gigabit through the air? That's ridiculous. You know, like, what, what, is five, what is 5G going to be, one terabit? You know, I, I think that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, I'm not an expert in everything, but I think those expectations are... I think 10, 10 or 20, maybe, okay, that's acceptable, but 100 and a gigabit, that's like I, I think way that whoever open. made that rule just one time, like, went into their, their son's room, who's probably four years old, and said, hey, Bobby, tell me a number between one and a thousand, and then just pick that number as, like, the freaking mm -hmm. standard for that measurement. It's just, it's crazy. It's out of hand. I mean, maybe I, they're Japanese <laughs> because they have the better phones, right? They have much they probably better, have the better market and they're probably bit better. Uh, they they probably have the better networks. Well, yeah, but here's even, part even of the there, issue. I'm sorry. The the vendors started advertising they had 4G before 4G was standardized. So you can't really say who's right and wrong because it's like draft. They started calling it first. It's draft 4G. What what bothers me if you watch a a commercial for Verizon or T-Mobile or fill in a blank for your provider they all state to be the fastest network i'm like really i very do well, they do they, they yeah. it seems like it to me. I, they word it very carefully i mean i've seen sprint go we're the biggest at&t says we're the fastest verizon says we're the most reliable like they each have their um word where they're the best at something like the maximum well i can't remember I can that, tell you, that word. here's something where there's the big lie verizon lte commercial the guy lives in the middle of nowhere in a farm, runs out to his mailbox to get his box, <laughs> runs back to his place. He's in the middle of nowhere. He ain't getting LTE. <laughs> he's lucky to get 3G. Right. And he's definitely not going to get a freaking expandable, like, lightsaber javelin exactly. sent from Verizon to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Right now, from what I've noticed, or, you know, according to the numbers that I've seen, 
uh, HSPA Plus seems to be about the fastest because they've been claiming that they get up to 18 to 21 megabits. Um, LTE, according to some of the tests, is, has been getting, according to their advertised, 12 megabits up. Well, I'm what, sorry, what down. Sprint, what does Sprint get? Sprint, Sprint gets about, theoretically, 10 megabits down and 3 up, I believe. But I've never, the highest I've ever gotten was 7.3 down and about, I think it was 1.1 or 1.2 upload yeah so oh that's right you have the evo that's right cool mm -hmm. and we just got 4g like a month ago right here oh good for you you know i, I get 4g it. i get 4g here and uh but you only get it in like certain places plus it kills your battery if you keep it on all the time let me just yeah, say I, go ahead i tested it once i left it on for i think cool. i left it on for like about two to three hours and and it, it only seemed to bring my battery down about 20 percent oh the standard battery not the high capacity well you right know what now. maybe no maybe it is it's Lalo had a friend come down from Chicago has, who has an Evo, and he had the battery that I, I ordered but never received, that big fat battery that's about three times capacity as a, the stock battery, mm -hmm. and his phone would, wouldn't even last a day, and he's running the stock OS on this thing. I'm, I'm not terribly upset I didn't receive my battery because I'm running fresh, uh, the hack ROM fresh on mine. And it mm -hmm. lasts a long. I get a couple days out of this thing. I mean, depending on the usage, he couldn't get a. a, a, a it's like a thirty-five-hundred milliamp battery. He was practically getting a day. Is that right? right? If and, that, if that. And he'd say, "What is say? Like, look, my phone feels hot, doesn't it?" And it's, it would. Like his phone was, was definitely doing something, and that's what. Well, that's what mine was doing. That's what really prompted me to want to freaking hack the thing and root it and and install a new ROM. So the stock OS, whatever it is, I don't think it's just a like a. A situation that he was only having with his phone. I think that that stock OS is really bloated and just draining batteries like crazy. It's not the it's not the Evo's fault, is what I'm saying. It's not the device's is, fault. Is it the right. yeah. Is it from the carriers? Like, is it the carriers loading it up with crap? Because yes, yes, yeah. Because fresh, yeah. the fresh ROM is basically the the stock HTC Sense without all the Sprint crap, and it runs great. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like on Verizon, if you dig into the Verizon operating system, you'll see an app called Zoom, Z-O-O-M. And you don't want to find what that app does or you will really want to rip it out of your phone. Really? What, it just yeah, overloads a, the battery? No, it's like a little spying thing that periodically um, takes inventory of stuff that's happening on your phone and sends it back to Verizon. Okay. Hey, um, let me bring up this, the Galaxy Tab. I think we can get into some juicy arguments about this because I, I frequently go to Best Buy now and pick it up and I ask questions and I, I, I'm trying to convince myself to buy it. I really like the device. I, number one, I hate, though, that there's no telephony in the U.S. They just stripped it out of there like, like nobody's business. Just strip, rip, no phone calls for you. So I, now I'm thinking to myself, do I want to pay the $30 to Sprint for the uh, data plan for this thing? It's... So I'm in there and I'm, I'm looking at the Sprint one and because I have a, I'm a Sprint customer because I have my Evo, I'm thinking to myself, I have to go with Sprint. Like I want, I'm going to get the tab probably and it's going to be Sprint. I should go with Sprint. And then I, I just had the cognition like it doesn't matter if I get the Sprint one or the Verizon one. I, they're not going to cut me a break on my price for Sprint even if I get the tab. There's no reason why I should stay with Sprint. So then I started looking at the Verizon one I'm, and I, I was asking the guy like, don't they cut me a deal as a Sprint customer? Can I get money like a... Uh, can I get a discount on my Galaxy Tab plan because I'm a Sprint Evo customer? And he said, well, you should call them and, and tell, ask them that. And it, I, it never occurred to me, me of all people who like to call and argue about stuff like that, that uh, I should. So that's what I'm probably going to do very soon is call Sprint and say, look, if I'm going to get the Galaxy Tab. If you don't cut me a deal, I'm going to get the Galaxy Tab for Verizon and see what they say. Any uh, input on, uh, I think that's a good idea. You think they'll go for it? Well, I'll say it isn't like car insurance or homeowner's insurance, but if they had any common sense about customer service, they would do something, something for you. And they won't um, <laughs> and because they, they are won't. clueless. But I don't I'll know. also add real yeah. quick, uh, as of November 2nd, there's an application called Super One Click. It's all one word. It's a Windows app, and I believe a Mac app. It will root the device. Um, after that, you can make calls using Bluetooth, and you can make calls with uh, Skype and with uh, SIP Droid. So you could use it phone, like a phone. Yeah, but I, I mean, I can't have a – I guess I could do that. But I can't have, like, a Sprint phone number for the thing, basically. 
Um, I don't know. Because my, I'm going to attempt to do a phone replacement with it. I wanted to replace my phone. To be Skype. Honest. Skype. Yeah. Hmm. I gotta think more well, about that. Do you make enough calls to, for it to matter? I know, but I make enough that I can't get rid of my phone and just get the tab. But I'm, maybe you make enough, only enough calls where you can deal with Skype. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, my experience with you, Skype on devices is not good. It Skype apps are clunky on these things. I'm gonna tell you, Skype on my Droid X with 200 plus other apps is seamless, smooth. Okay, well, I'm getting hacked the, to Skype then. The only time I have issues is when the call lasts for more than an hour. Then it would just seem like flake and hang up. Hmm. But it's an hour. Um, also, I'll say Z4 Root can also pwn it. Okay. Um, and there was somebody saying before it launched that they were guaranteed positive you that that device actually does have a carrier phone number attached to it. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna look more into it then. I have to do more research. I'm. I'm go, go, pro- go. Just go get it. Listen to the door. Now you're just rubbing it in my face. <laughs> now, I swear, um, I, I do mention this, and people have Twittered me and said, don't get that, get this instead. And I looked at one of the options that one of the guys have actually Twittered that I'm sh- I should get. It's as big as, as an iPad and weighs more. That's what he recommended to me. It's a view, a view Sonic device. No way, dude. I'm not going to get a two-pound device. I just might as well walk around with a laptop. Um, the tab is the correct form factor for me size-wise. I like the 7-inch screen. Anything else that you guys see coming down the line that's going to be a Galaxy Tab killer? Because it's a solid device. I don't know if you guys have played with it. I think it's solid. Not, not in the near future, but it'll happen. Well, my only concern is how soon after launch will it get gingerbread? Um, the Motorola Tab was shown off last week. I'm unclear when that's coming out, but that was actually shown running Honeycomb, which is supposed to be the first Android uh t- tablet OS I mean the first Android OS specifically geared for t- usage and I'll stop talking now because I can't talk. How I know what you mean. How what's the form factor on that? Is it a ten inch, seven inch? Honestly I think it was this very similar screen size to the Samsung Galaxy. But I gotta say the Galaxy from my experience seeing Samsung Android phone screens and the, the screen's gorgeous. I don't uh, know if Motorola's going to be able to do it as good. I have a really good feeling about the tab. I mean, I, I pick up every device in Best Buy when I go in. Literally, every laptop, every phone, every device. I pick them all up, and um, I, I, I was impressed by it. So it's, I think it's inevitable, guys. I'll let you know when I get it. All right. Yeah, it says a 7-inch and a 10-inch tablet in 2011. 20, that's so too, they, too long, so they, too far away. It's 20-something days. Too far. Way too That's like a couple of weeks. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have any Android news we want to go over before we end off? Um, The only things I wanted to add is um, Gingerbread is in the process of getting rolled out to people. I'm hesitant to download it, even though I'm not being offered it yet. It, but I did see a uh, posting that said Z4 root will still root that operating system. Hmm. I'll also say Z4 Root has been randomly taken off of the Android marketplace, and the uh, publisher of that application has never been given a valid reason why it has been taken off the market. Why? Is he being vocal about it? uh, Not extremely vocal. No, he he just posted, well, they took it off here. It's back again. They didn't tell me why they took it down. Yeah, that's it. I guess we'll Um, find out. I did look at the licensing. If you go to XDA forums, you can download Z4 Root and, uh, Z4 Root and, and put it on your device. If you have issues finding it, just send me an email at doordoorgeek at gmail.com or hit me off on Twitter. I'll give you the direct link to download it. Okay, on that note, let's go around, see who's going to actually download Gingerbread when it comes out. We lost Jose. But Lalo, are you going to get Gingerbread when it comes out? Yes. Steve D., Gingerbread? Yes. Door, you getting Gingerbread? No. Timster getting it? Yep. Yes. He, yes. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm staying fresh. Yeah. Staying and and fresh. now here's what I asked those other guys. Why are you getting gingerbread? Well, for for me, Dor, I don't root my device. No, 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 no. What is so good about 
gingerbread. Why why should you upgrade to it? Because in the computer world, we're always told never upgrade unless there's a valid, valid reason. No, to and never upgrade, upgrade your BIOS. Upgrade. Well, no, even upgrade your operating systems. How many times have you upgraded an operating system on a computer? I, I upgrade I get all the I mean I get all the updates every time. I'll take that's not an upgrade. Hmm. This is different though. This isn't like No, it isn't. I can tell you when I upgraded my phone the last time, it acted like crap. Apps would bomb hysterically. I had to go through the recovery uh, mode to get it to run smooth again. Yeah, but I, yeah, but I haven't point. heard of anything significant about it being extra cool. It's a little bit cleaner. It has a better keyboard, and I don't know of anything else that's really, you know, gets me excited. Lalo, if my phone gives me an option that to update, I don't even read the thing. I just hit update. <laughs> I agree. I'll no update it. I want to see what it does. Yeah, it's just if curiosity. It starts, you know, I'll just I'll just restore my phone to the original defaults, dude. You know. And... Yeah. Well, from there, you, you know? About the door's point, uh, my the roommate has he he had the iPhone the three the three NGS and when he did the update he said his phone went crawling. So I mean door doesn't does have a point. I'll probably wait a couple of weeks, possibly possibly a month to do the update, to be honest. Really? Yeah. You're not you're well, not just gonna I'll hit be... the button? Huh? You're not just gonna hit the button. Duke might or did Paul <laughs> Duke. Well, what? I can tell you that I I avoided the update on my phone. It was like a Verizon awful, stupid update, and it blew my route. And uh, I kept ignoring it, ignoring it, ignoring it. One day, I I missed. And you updated. I updated, and that was like a day before it came here, and it blew my route, and I was upset because I couldn't do wireless tethering. And then I rerouted it, and I'm a okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll just send a little note out to everybody. If your phone is rooted, if you made modifications to the operating system, like renaming or deleting annoying crapware that came with your phone, you better put all that stuff back before you upgrade. Cool. All right. Thanks, Dora. We got Jose back. It sounds, sounds like he's actually in one of his locomotives right now. Or at trains. Um, really? But, well, something just went by. You on an Air Force base? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what that was. Um, all right, let's go around here. Where can door? Where can people find you again quickly? Uh, Twitter.com slash door door geek. I've been posting a lot of stuff on Twitter. For instance, new Gmail. Download it. Check it out. It's cool. Awesome. Jose, where can people find you? Uh, the main site, I guess, computerdoctor.com. And like I told you guys before, um, if anybody knows people that only speak Spanish or they understand Spanish more fluently, that's probably a good place to send them if they want to, you know, learn a little something or keep up to date on the tech news and all that. Great. And that's computer with a Q, Q-O-M-P-U-T-E-R dot com, doctor dot com. That's right. Timster, how about you? Where can people find you if they want to chat with you? Yep. Tim's computer dot com is my website and I'm at Twitter at T-I-M-3-1-4-0-5. Don't worry. Uh, I haven't tweeted lately, but I will catch up. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Steve D, where can people find you? You can find me at crappycrapcrap.com. I, I need I need some more submissions. And uh, stephendmico.com, that's my blog. All right, Lalo? LaloNunez.com is back up and running. I'm trying to add more of the Android apps section on there. That's it. Okay. And if you want to tune in for more shows, just come to podnuts.com. Every time we do a live show, we're going to put it, we're going to put it on the home page. That's what we do. Yes. So uh, that's what we do. I'm, I'm going to start putting videos into the actual um, uh, posts now as well, the video version. Okay, that is going to be it for Android App Addicts for this week. Thank you guys for watching and listening and streaming, and we will see you next time. you got to stay tuned for Nuts at Night coming up now and the very first premiere, the premiere episode of what was previously the Nuts at Night post show is now going to be D'Amico After Dark. I love that name. There's... W- it, you it will be able to see that live with video for the first time ever on Justin TV or Justin.tv slash D'Amico After Dark after Nuts at Night. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be exciting. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. See you next time.